So our next speaker is Paul Schenk. He's a senior staff scientist at the Lunar and Planetary Institute. Paul carries out geologic and topographic mapping as well as impact cratering studies to determine the geologic evolution and history of icy satellites. So now we're moving even further uh, out into the solar system. Paul was a participating scientist on the Cassini mission and also works on the Dawn mission to the asteroid series. He's currently a member of the New Horizons team which recently explored Pluto for the first time. Good morning. So how many of you have heard of Pluto? Not the Disney dog, but the planet. Go ahead and raise your hands. Okay, good. Some of you may actually remember the summer of 2015 when Pluto, the planet, was actually revealed to humankind for the first time by the agency of the New Horizons spacecraft. And that's pretty much the story I want to tell you today. The story, uh, which actually helped to, um, let me make sure I got the pointer right, uh, takes us from the fantasy world of the space artist, this is a painting by the famous Chesley Bunnestall, into the reality of, of 2015 started in, uh, almost 90 years ago in Arizona with the discovery of Pluto by Clyde uh, Tombaugh uh, in Flagstaff, an American, yay, wave a flag, that sort of thing. Um, but for 60 years, it was basically a point of, a dusky point of light in the, in the night sky, uh, and we thought Pluto was pretty much alone, orbiting out beyond the orbit of Neptune by itself, until the year 1992, when the first of thousands of what we call Kuiper Belt objects were found. These are small uh, objects, smaller than the moon, thousands of them, uh, and this became, at that point, an important part of the solar system. Uh, and and uh, it occupies a large zone of the solar system uh, that we never explored directly until two and a half years ago. Now, this just gives you a sense of scale for what Pluto looks like. This is actually uh, a Hubble Space Telescope mosaic of Pluto. Uh, you don't see very much, you can't learn very much from it. Uh, it's almost the same size as the moon. And this is uh, Hunter Waits and Solidus at the far left. And sorry, Hunter, we win, we're bigger, yay. So um, uh, that just gives you a sense of scale. We learned a lot since the time of uh, the encounter. We now see a much better surface. Uh, but even before we got there, we knew Pluto was very strange, very cold surface, barely cold, about 30, 40 degrees Kelvin, something like that, with frozen. Uh, methane and carb uh, uh, nitrogen and carbon monoxide on the surface. This is just the Earth-based spectroscopy. You can see the wiggly lines indicating diagnostic bands of carbon monoxide and, and methane on it. It also had a large moon, which we only discovered in 1978, fairly recently. Uh, and we also have four smaller moons. I realized I forgot to put pictures of that in my, in my talk. Uh, but they're very small, about the size of Houston. Not very large, lumpy things. Uh, so let's talk about the spacecraft. Uh, this gives you a diagram of the spacecraft. It was about the size of a grand piano, not very big. It's not, not nearly as large as, as Juno. It has the uh, antenna, of course, the radioactive power source. The key instruments for us are the long range uh, or telescopic camera on board, and then the Ralph instrument, which is the uh, infrared spectrometer so we can map the distribution of the ices on the surface. Alice, and I didn't pick up these names. These are uh, names derived by the, the PI of the project. Uh, this uh, is usually is used mostly for uh, mapping, but also for examining the atmospheric composition. And it also has a student dust counter. Now, it didn't count the dust of students. That would take a lifetime. Uh, but it was actually built by students at the University of Colorado as the first such instrument that was actually flown on, a, on an interplanetary spacecraft, an instrument built by students. Uh, so that's the spacecraft. This is the trajectory, uh, rapid, uh, most fastest launch, uh, I think, in history uh, out of the solar system. It took about a year, only one year to get to Jupiter, about 10 hours to get past the orbit of, 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 of the moon. And then a long eight-year cruise out to Pluto, which we encountered two and a half years ago. So uh, this is the encounter geometry, a rapid flyby. Each of these uh, number, numerical ticks is one hour. So we're actually through the system very quickly, passing through the shadow, the sun shadow of Pluto and Charon to look for atmosphere. 
So we didn't have much time to do this. We had to do it, and it all had to be done automatically, and there was no communication uh, with the spacecraft until it had gotten well past Pluto, and this is the celebration uh, up in the, sorry, up in the corner is the celebration when we got the signal. Uh, you can actually watch that video on YouTube, by the way. Uh, so it was a great success. And what did we discover when we got to Pluto? We found an amazing landscape that is, was in many ways Earth-like, surprisingly so. We had no idea what we were gonna see when we got there. There were all sorts of predictions that would be cold and dead or active geysers or, or all sorts of things. But what we saw was a landscape of mountains, ice sheets, glaciers, uh, volcanoes, and valleys. And this uh, slide shows some of those. This is a perspective view. You can see some of these valleys scouring into the mountains there. Here's uh, part of the mountain range there. Uh, so you can see the sense of scale. This is uh, actually a fairly wide view across the surface. When you look up close, you see some amazing uh, valleys. These are actually glaciers pouring down off the mountains, coming off, scouring uh, deep channels. This looks very much like a uh, scene from the Alps, for example or uh, more of the Himalayas, actually, I think. Uh, so th this is pretty rugged mountain terrain, uh, several kilometers here, and then there's this several kilometers high, and then there's this ice sheet off to the left, which we'll look at in a few minutes. Uh, this is that, in fact, this is that ice sheet. And this was the first image, the high, first high-resolution image that came down from the spacecraft, and this is jaw-dropping sort of thing. Uh, and, and it looks like no planetary landscape we've, we've seen before, except maybe on Earth. And what you see are these cells. Uh, looks like uh, basically convection patterns, and that's exactly what it is. This is a nitrogen ice sheet with some uh, carbon monoxide and methane mixed in, but it's all solid. And these are all gases, of course, that we know on Earth. Uh, you breathe nitrogen. You don't want to breathe carbon monoxide, on it, carbon monoxide or methane, but they're all frozen on the surface because of the temperature, and they form this deep basin that's about three kilometers deep and fill it. It's quite an amazing structure. It's over 1,000 kilometers wide. You also see mountain ranges. And this shows the global view of uh, Pluto with this ice sheet right here in the center, uh, this bright uh, oval. Uh, and then to the side, you see these strange things out here, which actually are mountains several kilometers high, and they're capped with snow. But the snow, again, is not what we would ski on uh, in, in Colorado. It is, in fact, methane snow. Uh, this is because they peak up high above the surface, several kilometers, and the temperatures are actually warmer because of the temperature inversion, so the methane precipitates out at the high altitudes uh, at a much higher rate. So it's a very strange sort of thing. Uh, but in fact, the mountains are not uh, rock as we know it, as you would see in Colorado, but, the, but are water ice. Water ice is so hard and so stiff on Pluto that it forms mountains. So it's sort of like Earth, but different, uh, kind of a twisted Earth. Uh, we also see volcanoes, and this is a slightly different look at the, at the data set. This is a, an image uh, of this uh, volcanic feature here. It's about 200 kilometers across, but it's color-coded to show the topography, and that's one of the things that I was responsible for in the mission was to drive the topographic map. So the browns and yellows are high, but the blues are low. So there's about five kilometers of relief in this image here. But this is a very unusual structure. There's no impact craters. It's very young. We don't know the exact age, but uh, it's a very young structure. Uh, but very high, and then it's got a deep volcanic pit in the center. Some of these mountains here on the side are about five kilometers high, and they're some of the highest structures on, on the surface of Pluto. There, we discovered some other things when we got there. Uh, there's a large atmospheric uh, haze layer on Pluto that extends over 150 kilometers into the sky. And this is just one of those pretty pictures, which is really nice to look at. The, its large moon is fractured and has a re resurfaced landscape and 15 kilometers of relief on it. So I'm going to, because I'm short on time, I'm going to briefly go through that. Uh, so we have this active world of volcanoes and glaciers and ice sheets. And it represents the first exploration of the vast outer reaches of the solar system. But we're not done yet. Uh, the blue dot shows where New Horizons is right now. It just passed Pluto two and a half years ago, as I said. We're now on approach to uh, an object called MU69. It doesn't have a formal name yet. It's about the size of 
uh, the Cape Cod region, as you can see in this region here, in this image here. This shows our trajectory. We're going to reach this object. It's a very much smaller than, than Pluto. We're going to reach this object uh, a little less than a year from now on New Year's Day uh, next year, two, uh, 2019. And we're looking forward to it because it looks like this object may be possibly a binary object, sort of like two small round objects that are sort of touching each other. And there's some evidence that it may actually have a small moon orbiting it. We're not sure yet because it's so distant we can't even image it. Uh, so with that, um, I'll close and I'll thank our team. And we had a great team and we had a great ride to Pluto. So I'll be happy to answer questions. Questions for Paul? I have one. Um, oh, sorry, go ahead. It's okay. Uh, can you talk a little bit about the colors that we saw in there, those sort of red browns and the, uh, the whites you explained were these snows and ices, but what about the, 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 the darker colors? Yes, there are a whole host of colors on, on Pluto. That's what the, the Ralph instrument was, was good at mapping. And also our imager, uh, we got uh, several colors on that. You see some really dark red stuff, and we think those are probably organic materials that, that are precipitated out in the equatorial region. And in the far north, at the North Pole, you see sort of like a yellow uh, ice. We call it yellow snow. But, um, but it's probably a methane deposit that formed at the poles because, uh, well, Pluto, uh, the Pluto has this tilted uh, rotational axis that's flying on its side, sort of like the planet Uranus, where it's spinning like this. So in some cases during the season, the pole is facing towards the sun. In other cases, it's facing away from the sun. So you get these strange color, con um, sorry, strange temperature contrasts. Um, but we also see uh, in, the, um, in the bright uh, oval, you see uh, colors that represent the carbon monoxide and methane as well. So uh, you see a variety of different colors, all related to where those ices are distributed. And the control on that is driven by the elevation. Thank you. So how, how deep is the methane snow on top of the water ice? Um, uh, it's thick enough that it covers the, the d dark red stuff underneath, which means it's got to be a couple inches probably, but we don't really know how thick it is because we didn't get any closer than that. Than, than that so. so could you ski on it? Um, the slopes are pretty steep, yeah. It, you got some really good slopes on these mountains, so yeah. <laughs> Thank you very much.